Charles, how do you feel about the SEC's flip-flop on their position on the Hinden opinion speech? So, what they say in public, what they say in court, it's two different things. Um, I remember Giuliani doing this. We have evidence that Trump's election was fraudulent. Uh, the, uh, the, you know, Biden cheated. It was the great con. Or, or, they go to the judge and the judge says, well, do you have any evidence of fraud? No, 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 no. I don't want to get this far. Come on now. They got a case to win. They, and so, you know, they're, they're moving a little bit. Uh, but the unintended or intended consequence is that they've gone from clarity to anti-clarity. It's not fair as a regulator to tell an industry one thing, but then to reverse course and say, well, we didn't really mean it. It's just not fair. You know, if it's a personal opinion, you issue a statement after the fact, if you can't get them to retract it there, to say this was just a personal opinion and does not reflect the opinion of the agency. But you can't just let it ride, let opinions be written on it, and have the industry push forward, and then change your mind because it's convenient for a particular enforcement case that you're doing. But we've noticed this with this particular government, at all levels of this particular government, in different branches of this government where they say one thing, they do another thing, and whatever is politically convenient, they do. It, it's not good leadership. It's not how prior administrations ran things on both sides of the aisle, and it's just hurtful to everybody. And, it, and it's not a partisan thing. It's just a clarity thing. When you're in an industry, you'd like to know what the rules are, but if the rules are ever-changing and undiscernible or are staged in a way where it's impossible to comply, so you're regulated out of existence, it's pretty crazy. It's almost Kafka-esque. You must have a license to do business, but you can't get a license to do the business. But then when you ask about it, you're told to get a license to do the business. It makes no sense. And this is not how you compete. And it's how you damage a $2 trillion industry. Yeah, guys, this was a very important speech by Charles Hoskinson. Most likely, you guys already caught on to exactly what he said. But basically what he was implying within this video right here was that it doesn't make a lot of sense for the SEC to do what they do. To basically get out an opinion, claim, or basically act as if it's actual fact. We're here referring to the William Hinman speech about whether or not Ethereum was a security and a lot of things alike. And then all of a sudden, because a lawsuit that you're involved with would like it to state otherwise, all of a sudden you change your mind. That doesn't work that way. You can't <laughs> you can't do it that way. That was a little as a post by Charles Hoskinson, which Crypto Airy here reposted real briefly. But that was actually really nice for, for him to basically reaffirm whatever we've been thinking on the channel here about the whole situation. It's it's really nice to see some of the bigger heads in the industry also state the same thing. That it just doesn't make sense. It's kind of BS. You know, but let's not make too many words foul on all of this. Uh, let's quickly dive into a couple of things, right? First of all, good morning, crypto YouTube fam. Put down below. Just write good morning down below just to get a you know, good morning started, you know? Everybody got to get a good morning. Then also looking at the prices, things were looking pretty good. The entire morning here when I was looking at stuff, most things were going up. That's, again, an enjoyable morning for me. Even though I definitely like to see minus 80, minus 90% on everything so I can buy more. You know, it still feels better when you wake up and you see plus 20 rather than minus 10. If I wake up and it shows minus 10, I kind of wake up like this. I'm like, oh, you know. Now I'm like, oh, ecstatic, you know, more excited to make a video or something. Then again, a lot has gone on in the Ripple v. SEC lawsuit, and that's mainly what we're going to be covering for right now. So there's a couple of posts by James, and if you post something, you already know it's fire. Ripple responds to the SEC. Library separately pled a fair notice defense that the SEC did not even ask the court to strike, and which remains pending in that case. The SEC's omission of this fact from its SIR reply application is remarkable. Let's take a look at that specifically, huh? So let's dive a little bit further into this SIR reply because that also just came out. Let's check it out. SEC v. Ripple. The SEC just filed a request to file a SIR, SIR reply regarding the motion to strike, citing the SEC v. Library decision in which New Hampshire uh, federal judge granted judgment on the pleadings on an unrelated selective enforcement defense. This is a library decision on the motion for judgment on the pleadings on the selective enforcement defense raised by library in New Hampshire. So 
What the SEC is again doing is taking a specific case and trying to relate it to another. Jack asks, so <laughs> Jack asks, uh, so I read it three times and still don't get how this has anything to do with Ripple. Did I miss something? No. Why? Because they're claiming stuff, as just said, from one lawsuit and trying to portray it onto the Ripple one, like for the third time, but nobody really understands exactly why, how, and in our own easy words, it's like comparing apples to oranges. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Let's quickly see if there was anybody else in this comment section who was so confused about why the SEC thought this would be a really smart idea. Crypto Wolf said SEC is going to drag out every lawsuit geared towards crypto companies because they don't know how to regulate the industry, or in my own opinion, they don't the next step. Megan Jade asks, can you please explain this? Just seems like another delay tactic. And John says, this isn't a big deal. The SEC wants to write another paragraph or two based on this library case decision that came out February 7th. Even if Judge Torres denies the request, the SEC brought the case to her attention by this letter. This library decision has little to zero impact, however. Wrath of Kahneman also said, wow, they seemed adamant about getting this new president in as if it could make uh, or would make a case they've failed to establish so far. Not exactly sure um, what this was all for or how this will help. And that's also what Jeremy Hogan is in on. Um, in the library case, library actually asserted a fair notice defense. And not only did it not get stricken, the SEC didn't even try to strike it. So how a trial level court striking a completely different affirmative defense in that case is relevant, I don't understand. So... Basically, Ripple has a couple of affirmative defenses. Library has a couple of affirmative defenses. And as far as I know from talking to lawyers right now, again, these videos are not financial or legal advice. I'm just a random guy on the internet. Remember that. Is that the the uh, affirmative defense is one that you can basically win on. So the fairness defense is an affirmative one, meaning they can basically win on that specific point alone. If they didn't get fair notice, boom, they've won, for example. If they didn't get another you know, affirmative defense, they won, you know, because that's a critical defense, I guess. Um, so here's the fourth defense that, that they put up. The library did not have fair notice of whether it's sales, yada, yada, yada. doesn't really matter what it says there. Jeremy Hogan said, in fact, I'm pretty sure that Ripple would do little legal judo and spin this into a positive for it because the SEC didn't even move to strike the fair notice defense in the library case. Sometimes you don't want to try and throw every case into a pleading. This one was one of those times, most likely, where they basically made a mistake and just made it worse for themselves. Yort asks, can you explain to us like we're 12? Thanks. So, your mom won't let you watch Lauren Gray TikToks, but allow you to watch Addison Rae TikToks all you want. Today, however, she tells your dad that she's taking your phone away because you watch Addison Rae TikToks. You're confused and pouty. Or pooty, pouty. Yeah. I like that, though. I like that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely strange and definitely confusing. And that's, again, what the space is all up uh, uh, all about right now. Again, Ripple responds to the SEC library, separately pled a fairness defense that the SEC did not even ask the court strike, and which remains pending in the case. The SEC omission of this fact from its surcer reply application is remarkable, and everybody right now is really confused. Once more, the library case is, is um, a bit of walking shadow, a poor player, that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, uh, signifying nothing. In layman's terms, the decision from the SEC, or from the library case that the SEC submitted to the court is irrelevant to the Ripple case. Like, again, so, conclusion, not exactly sure why they thought that this, um, this motion was necessary or why they wanted to throw it in. I agree with a couple of these guys saying it might have just been a mistake right now in hindsight because the uh, legal president might actually be worse rather than better. Meaning they threw this case in and Ripple didn't do it, the SEC did it because the SEC thought they could build up their argument. But now it turns out that Ripple's going to kind of you know, do the mumbo jumbo, the little flip, and now put it back and uh, you know, shove it up them, I guess. Makes most sense to me. Because I can't seem to find the connection. I can't really understand exactly why they thought it would be a smart idea. I can't really see why it would help them. But I, I, I sometimes wonder, are they incompetent? Are we so freaking smart? Are the XRP community lawyers so like 5,000 IQ? Are the SEC lawyers like, you know, a little bit crazy? Is it all really a show that it's just they, they did this stuff on purpose? Because how can you make these rookie mistakes? If these lawyers like Jeremy Hogan and James Fillin and... Um, and Jardine can so easily point it out. I'm thinking, you're not going to try it then, right? These guys should be the best of the best, the SEC lawyers. They should be, at least, in my opinion. If they're supposed to protect the investors like that of a whole country, they should be top class. If they make a mistake like this, 
I don't know. Doesn't doesn't seem to ring a bell for me. I just don't really fully understand. But hey, that's just a theory. That's just my thoughts. And that was it for today's little video on the Ripple v SEC case and just a little update. So is this all bullish? I would say so because there's nothing negative that we can fetch out of this and there's only, I guess, positive stuff that can come out. So I'm definitely excited. I give it a thumbs up. And uh, it's a pretty big one because it's strange. Let's put it like that.